Our scripture lesson this morning is from the uh, fifth chapter of Matthew. It's on page four in the New Testament. And I invite you to take your um, Bibles from the pews and to read along as I read. Reading verses 13 through 16. Listen for the word of God. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of the Lord. Have you ever noticed that when we really want to pay attention to someone uh, and give them a real compliment, stressing their worth and their usefulness, we often say, people like that are the salt of the earth. Today, we are concerned about salt-free and limited salt diets, as we just saw, for health reasons. But in the ancient world, salt was highly valued. The Greeks called it salt divine. And the Romans said there is nothing more useful than sun and salt. And Jesus says to his followers, to you and to me, you are the salt of the earth. In the time of Jesus, salt was connected in people's minds with three special qualities. Salt was connected with purity. No doubt its glistening whiteness made the connection easy. The Romans said that salt was the purest of all things. Salt was the most primitive of all offerings to the gods. And even Jewish sacrifices included salt. So then, if we are Christians, we are to be the salt of the earth. We must be examples of purity. One of the characteristics of the world in which we live today is the lowering of the standards of honesty, reliability, and morality. As Christians, we are called to be persons who hold high the standards of purity in speech, conduct, and thought. We are not to withdraw from the world, but must, as James suggests, following the example of Jesus himself, keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Secondly, in the ancient world, salt was the commonest of all preservatives. It was used to keep things from decaying. If we are to be the salt of the earth, we must have a certain cleansing influence on life. We all know that there are certain people in whose company it is easy for standards to be relaxed. There are people who lie all the time, seldom telling the truth. We as Christians must be the cleansing agent for the society in which we live. We must be the persons who by our presence and actions defeat corruption and make it other, easier for others to be good. But the greatest and most obvious quality of salt is that salt lends flavor to things. Food without salt is flat. 
and tasteless. Christianity is to life what salt is to food. Christianity lends flavor to life. The tragedy is that too often people have connected uh, Christianity with what takes flavor out of life. Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, I might have entered the ministry if certain clergymen I know had not looked and acted so much like undertakers. And Robert Louis Stevenson once entered into his diary as if he were recording some extraordinary phenomenon. I've been to church today and I am not depressed. (laughs) Hope that's true today. (laughs) We need to discover the radiance of Christian faith and share it with the world about us, which is sorely in need of wholesome excitement. In a depressed world, we are to be those who remain full of hope. There should be a sheer sparkle about our lives as Christians. And yet too often, we dress and act like mourners at a funeral, even wearing usually black robes. Wherever we are and whatever we are doing, we should be the salt of of the earth, those who spread joy and hope. Jesus went on to say, if the salt loses its saltiness, it is only fitting that it be thrown out and trodden underfoot. Now we know today that salt really does not lose its flavor or its saltiness. Perhaps what Jesus had in mind was the fact that in Palestinian ovens, they were out of doors. They were under a tiled floor. And after a certain length of time, the salt lost its usefulness. And the tiles were taken up and the salt removed and thrown out on the road. It had lost its power to retain heat and was thrown out. The point is this. Usefulness, uselessness invites disaster. If we are not fulfilling our purpose as Christians, then we are on the road to disaster. We are meant to be the salt of the earth. And if we do not bring to life the purity, the cleansing power, and the radiance that we ought, then we have lost our purpose and lead others astray. Jesus now abruptly changes the image in order to further clarify the meaning of our lives as Christians. In the Gospel of John, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And in our text this morning, he tells us that as his followers, we are to be the light of the world. Jesus demands nothing less than we are to be like him. The Jews listening to Jesus would have been quite familiar with this idea. They spoke of Jerusalem as the light to the Gentiles. Jerusalem was indeed a light to the Gentiles, but God lit Israel's lamp. The lamp with... The light with which the nation or person of God shook was a reflected light. And so it must be with us as Christians. Jesus does not demand that we produce our own light. That is a problem with too many of the self-help programs that are very popular today. We are to shine with the reflection of Jesus' light. We often speak of the radiant bride, but the radiance which shines in her face comes from the love which has been born in her heart. The radiance which shines from our lives as Christians is lit by the presence of Christ within our lives. When Jesus said we are to be the light of the world, he meant that we are to be seen by others. Light is something first and foremost that is meant 
to be seen. And we as Christians are meant to be seen, not hidden. As someone has said, there can be no such thing as a secret discipleship for either the the secrecy destroys the discipleship or the discipleship destroys the secrecy. Our Christianity, our Christian life should be perfectly visible to all, not just within the church, but everywhere. Here in the church, we receive our training that we are to use out in the world. A Christianity whose efforts stop at the church door is of not much use to anyone. Our Christian lives should be visible in the way that we treat a customer, in the way that we order a meal at a restaurant, in the way we treat our employees, in the way we serve our employer, the way we play a game, the way we drive a car, and our interactions with neighbors in the language we use or the literature we read. A Christian should be just as much a Christian in the shop, the schoolroom, the kitchen, on the playing field, as in the church. Jesus did not say, you are the light of the church. He said, you are the light of the world. Our lives as the followers of Jesus Christ are to be evident to all. Light is also a guide. Lights mark the ship channels of rivers and the narrows of the inside passage to Alaska, as we learned one night several years ago. And where would we be without headlights on our cars when we drive at night? A light is something to make the way clear. As Christians, we are to make the way clear for others. We are to be the example of good. And this is desperately needed in the world today. We need more people who are willing to stand up and say, this is the way to go and the thing to do. Or on the other occasions to say, this is not the thing to do. I will not be party to this. Many people do not have the moral strength and courage to stand by themselves. But if someone leads, they will follow. It's our duty as Christians to take the lead which those with less courage can follow. The world needs guiding lights. A light is also a warning light. It can tell us when there is a danger ahead. That is why we have stoplights on our cars and flashing lights on emergency vehicles. It is sometimes our duty as Christians, as hard as it may be, to warn others of some danger. One of the greatest tragedies of life is for someone, especially a young person, to come to us and say, I would have never gotten into this situation in which I now find myself if you had only spoken to me in time. If our warnings are given, not in anger, not in irritation, not in criticism, not in condemnation, not in desire to hurt someone, but in love, they will be heard and will be effective. The light which can be seen, which warns and which guides. This is the light which we must be as Christians. A light also opens the way. A Christian dentist moved into a new home and he soon found that the neighborhood teenagers were littering his yard and riding bicycles over his lawn. None of this discouraged him from loving his neighbors. One night, the leader of the teenage group had a bad toothache. The boy's mother sent him 
to the dentist to be examined. And the dentist found a tooth which needed extensive and expensive repair and offered to fix it. The boy refused, saying his family could not pay for so much work. Finally, the dentist persuaded the boy to let him do the repairs. And the dentist did not send him a bill. And he soon forgot about the incident. That summer, the dentist left town for an extended vacation. And when he returned, he found that his lawn had been well cared for during the time by the teenager whose tooth he had repaired. And the dentist tried to pay him, and the boy refused. With day-by-day -day efforts like this, we too can make our light shine. We can bring rich flavor and taste to a tasteless society and so become the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus wraps all this up by reminding us that our salt and our light are not to draw attention to ourselves but are to point to God from whom we receive them. Here again, we are to do what Jesus did. We are not to dwell on what we have done, but on what God has enabled us to be and to do. So long as we think about the praise, the thanks, the prestige that we will get for what we have done, we are not following the way of Christ. When we show the love and the grace of God in Christ to all we meet and point them to God, then indeed we will be salty Christians and the light of the world. May it be so in your life and in mine. Amen.